my Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you're here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. In these days of Easter, as we have been considering the apparitions of our Lord to the disciples, it always comes to my mind how amazing it is that these same apostles, these same men and women who have been so fearful, who have been so weak in many ways, and we see it. Jesus has to appear several times to them and to bring them comfort, to give them strength, and to kind of prop up their understanding of the teachings of our Lord. And obviously, the apostles had had many weaknesses, and they had fallen many times. And these same men and women, not too long after, would bring the message of the gospel to the whole world. And in a few centuries, they would pretty much turn the world upside down. From a world that was persecuting Christians, killing them, and many of them would die martyrs, a world that was morally very far from the Christian ideals or message. A world that didn't seem that open to what they were preaching. Even the Jews, who were the ones that had to understand the message better than anyone else, were very much opposed to what Jesus was teaching them. But still, the message spread so fast. Still, the apostles brought the teachings of Jesus Christ to all the known world of that time. And we know of different apostles, like James going all the way to Spain, Paul and all his trips, others going to India, even China. Bring in the good news to all men and women. So I tend to ask myself, and maybe you've asked yourself the same questions, like how did they do it? What was the trick? These same men and women who were hiding, afraid, during Jesus' passion are now fearlessly going out, and it's working. People are converting. People are listening. What changed? Are these men now superheroes? Is the Holy Spirit really that powerful that completely changed their lives? The fact that they have the Eucharist, the Mass, that makes such a difference and people feel attracted to it? Of course, there is no one answer, right? There's probably many factors, historical factors, cultural factors, the Holy Spirit, of course, the Eucharist, and the fact that these men actually made huge sacrifices, right, and well, all around the world. But there's no one element. But for sure, an element that is important and that tends to go a little bit unnoticed is the fact that Christians lived charity so well. We know that. Peter mentions it, how the pagans would comment among themselves, look how they love one another. And that, in the time that the apostles lived in, was very shocking to people. The fact that they would live in such fraternity, the fact that they would take care of each other so well, their world, like ours, was very individualistic. 
It was a lot of hatred and infighting, jealousy, and division. A lot of hatred between peoples, separation between classes, racism, as there is in our culture nowadays. But the apostles came to change that. The disciples, the Christians, came to change that. And they will take care of each other. And we see that in the Acts of the Apostles, how they sell their properties to feed those who are most in need, and they share their things, and those who have more help those who have less. And there is no distinction between poor and rich, different classes. They all get together for the Eucharist. They all share. They all help each other. There is love. There is charity. There is fraternity. And this was something new, attractive to everyone. And we can think that this was something that people really felt pulled. And it brought a lot of people toward Christianity. And then they found the faith and all that. But this fraternal aspect must have been a main point that helped this spread throughout the whole world. Well, obviously, we know that this was not a technique. Right? So the Christians said, hey, let's do something really different here let's pretend we love each other so that people will come to christian faith i mean they honestly truly loved each other because this was the commandment that jesus had left for them that's what we read about today in the gospel this is my commandment love one another as i have loved you this i command you he insists at the end love one another We've been reading this in these last couple of days. That new commandment that Jesus brought to us. The element that will be distinctive. People will recognize because you love one another. Jesus would have said this. And the disciples took this to heart. They really loved one another. How? The way Jesus had loved them. That's what Jesus had commanded them. And obviously we know how Jesus loved us by giving his life for us, dying on the cross for us. We know very well how Jesus treated each person with what love and affection and understanding. Even those who were sinners, even those who were persecuting him and asking him questions to trick him and maybe catch him saying something unorthodox. Jesus was always patient, loving, accepting, even on the cross, while he was dying. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. This was the example the apostles had. This is the charity they lived. And this is what became so attractive to everybody. It was probably one of the main elements of the quick expansion of the Christian faith because people felt attracted. Why? Because everybody needs affection. Everybody needs love. And that still applies to us today. And Jesus is telling you and me, love one another as I have loved you. That commandment is still very much in place. Not only because we want to attract more people, it's not a technique for apostolic purposes, it's because it's the only true way to be happy. If we love our brothers and sisters, with the love that Jesus had for us, we will be happier. We will be the better. And then those people we love will be happier. And then others will see it and will be attracted. And they will be happier because they want to be happy too. It's a win-win-win situation, if we can call it that way. So let us follow this commandment of our Lord. Let us really make this effort. To love one another, everyone, starting obviously from home, from those we have around us, parents, siblings, colleagues, friends, but everyone, people on the street, people on TV, politicians that we don't like too much, love them, as Jesus has loved you. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me in this meditation. 
I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.